What's up everyone? My most recent build struggled with airflow and started to overheat. So I decided to look into Corsair's newest MATS case, the Corsair 2500X. Today we're going to do a review of the case and also see what the hype's about with Corsair's new IQ link system and the new QX120 fan. So let's get into it. Like most new cases, Corsair's case features a panoramic design which allows you to see all of the components by using the dual chamber system to separate the power supply and cords from the rest of the build. The MATS case features multiple quality of life improvements such as two USB-A Gen 1 ports, one USB-C Gen 2 port along with a reset switch and an LED power switch. The case also features an easily removable air filter on the bottom of the case that can be assessed from the front for easy cleaning. Each panel is designed to be easily removed. The top mesh panel requires no more than lifting a few tabs and the front panel is held together using two screw tabs in the rear followed by lifting it out. The same of which goes for the back panel, which includes a built-in mesh filter. The side panel is also removable via screws, but I opted not to do so for this build. By the way, this side panel can be replaced with a conversion mesh kit that Corsair sells to help increase the airflow even further. Once disassembled, we can see the case has space for a 360 millimeter on both the top and the bottom of the case, and also supports a 240 millimeter radiator on the inside for intake flow. Combined with a single 120 or 140 millimeter fan in the rear, we end up with a cooling design that Corsair guarantees will be able to handle whatever system you could throw at it, and trust we'll put it to the test. Today we're going to install sets of the new IQ Link QS120 fans which are designed to connect with one simple wire that runs between the fans and the controller to simplify installation. The plan is to install three fans up top, three on the bottom, one in the rear, and we're even going to include two more as part of the IQ Link H100i all-in-one water cooler for a total of nine fans. The back of this case provides ample room for cable management and includes a HD audio cable, a simple power LED switch cable that ties directly into the motherboard, a USB-C header cable, and a dual USB-C A cable. And the motherboard slots are even designed for the new rear connected motherboards that have been coming out from MSI and ASUS. I don't have one though. The rear of this case holds a slot for two removable hard drives, one slot which holds the included mounted hardware, while the front of the case holds slots for two solid state drives. The case supports four PCIe slots and even supports vertical mounted GPUs if you buy the necessary kit. If the case looks larger than expected for an MATS case, well, that's because it is. The case is about 18 and a half inches deep, 14 and three quarter inches tall, and 12 inches wide. But now that we've got that out the way, let's move on to the install. For the motherboard, I'm reusing my MSI Mag B550 motor AM4 motherboard and matching it up with a Ryzen 7 5800 X3D CPU. For RAM, I'm using 32 gigs of Corsair's Vengeance Pro RGB 3600 MHz RAM. The case comes pre-configured for the MATS standoffs and due to its larger size, installation of the motherboard was a breeze. I could immediately see that I would have ample room for whatever components I decided to add. Next, I flipped the case over and removed the filter to install the bottom fans and once again, everything went smooth. I decided to side mount the radiator and found that the back side mount comes off with a screw towards the top. I flipped the fans on the cooler to intake and then mounted the radiator back to the removable backside mounting plate. Afterwards, it was easy to slide the whole system back in place and reinstall the top mounting screw. Afterwards, I applied the thermal paste to install the pump to the CPU. The radiator has a built-in hub, so all connections to the cooler run through the line so there's no hanging wires from the pump. Once done, I added the rear fans and installed the top fans and not once did I ever feel cramped working inside this case. The next step was to hook up the IQ Link system and here's the plan. Each controller can handle up to 12 devices. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the red, and the connection between each set of fans is shown in orange. The green is gonna go out the back of the case and then connect to one end of the controller. The two fans in the blue will connect to the radiator hub, which would then go out to the back to the other side of the controller. And here we can see me making a few of the connections. Once the cables were fed through, each side of the connector was connected to the hub, followed by one USB connection that goes to the motherboard's USB header. The last connection was the cis pin power outlet that connects from the hub to the power supply. And yeah, nine fans and a water cooler all reduced down to four simple cables. Crazy. The lower rear of the case provides support for a full ATS power supply, but the case comes with an SFS adapter installed. Once removed, installing my ASUS Tough 850 power supply was easy and still left enough room for cable management. After installing the power cables and somewhat cleaning up the wires, I decided to add one last thing, the IQ Link LCD cooler upgrade. Installation was as easy as pulling off the original cap and lining up the pins on the other side of the new cap and fitting it into the cooler. Afterwards, one USB-C cable needed to be ran from the radiator hub to the USB header on the motherboard. For my GPU, I went with a Zotac 4070 Ti Trinity, the same one for my last video. After removing a few PCI slot screws on the back, the GPU fit right in and there was way more than enough leftover space for even a larger graphic cards in the future. 
I reassembled the case and the build was looking beautiful with only one thing left, gluing it all up. The first boot up took a while, but the end result was beautiful. Pictures and videos do not do this thing justice. The lights were crystal clear and the IQ software allows for tons of customization, even down to the fan speeds and colors of each individual fan. Overall, this case was worth the money. It's extremely easy to build in and the new Corsair IQ Link system simplified wiring like no other. The cooling performance was impressive too, with my CPU hanging around 65 to 70 C at full tilt and my GPU fan refusing the need to even cut on. The system was relatively quiet too, which became a big issue with my last build. Now, while I admit the components are pricey, I believe it's money well spent for anyone looking for a high quality build with the added levels of customization. But I want to know what you guys all think. Comment below if this is a case you'll be interested in. And as usual, if you laughed or you learned something, feel free to like and subscribe.